give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Thank you. Too often, we have seen what happens when technology outpaces regulation. The unbridled exploitation of personal data, the proliferation of disinformation, and the deepening of societal inequalities. We have seen how algorithmic biases can perpetuate discrimination and prejudice, and how the lack of transparency can undermine public trust. This is not the future we want. If you were listening from home, you might have thought that voice was mine and the words from me. But in fact, that voice was not mine. The words were not mine. And the audio was an AI voice cloning software trained on my floor speeches. The remarks were written by chat GPT when it was asked how I would open this hearing. And you heard just now the result. The audio and my playing it may strike you as curious or humorous, but what reverberated in my mind was what if I had asked it and what if it had provided an endorsement of Ukraine surrendering or Vladimir Putin's leadership. That would have been really frightening. And the prospect is more than a little scary. This is a remarkable time to be working on artificial intelligence. But as this technology advances, we understand that people are anxious about how it could change the way we live. I believe that there will be far greater jobs on the other side of this and that the jobs of today will get better. I, I think it's important. First of all, I think it's important to understand and think about GPT-4 as a tool, not a creature, which is easy to get confused. My worst fears are that we cause significant, we, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. Uh, I think that could happen in a lot of different ways. It's why we started the company. Um, it's a big part of why I'm here today uh, and why we've been here in the past and, and we've been able to spend some time with you. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Uh, and we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening, but we, we try to be very clear-eyed about what the downside case is and the work that we have to do to mitigate that. Given that we're going to face an election next year and these models are getting better, uh, I think this is a significant area of concern. I think there's a, lot, there's a lot of policies that companies can voluntarily adopt, and I'm happy to talk about what we do there. Um, I do think some regulation would be quite wise on this topic. Form a new agency that licenses any effort above a certain scale of capabilities and can take that license away and ensure compliance with safety standards. Number two, I would create a set of safety standards focused on what you said in your third hypothesis as the dangerous capability evaluations. One example that we've used in the past is looking to see if a model can self-replicate and self-exfiltrate into the wild. And I will tell you something. You can create 10 new agencies, but if you don't give them the resources, and I'm talking not just about dollars, I'm talking about scientific expertise, you guys will run circles around.